Today we're talking about properly slating on your movie. So slates are a big deal when using motion picture film. With digital, not so much of a problem. As long as you kind of have, you know, the basic number, the scene number, and the take, you're probably fine, right? Especially with modern syncing systems, which can auto-sync based on time code or based on waveform. You don't have those two options on motion picture film, unfortunately. Where there were some amazing time code systems made in the past, both Aton and Aerie had incredible time code systems built into their cameras. The vast majority of people who transfer film and the vast majority of people who own and work with those cameras don't have the time code injection boxes that have existed in the past. Where the Aerie cameras can program time code directly into the camera display, the Aton cameras can't and require an Aton code generator box. So time code becomes a real problem. Plus, and this is critical, getting the time code to match from your camera to your audio recorder is very, very tricky with motion picture film time code generating systems. I'm just gonna talk about the process of how to slate on a motion picture film. It's very, very, very simple, but it does differ from digital in a couple of ways. The first rule is you do not wanna run the film until the um, actual time that you're going to mark it. So what that means is that you're going to first run audio, you're then going to open the slate so the time code is very visible, and you're going to call out the data on the slate. You know, um, scene, take, and then you're going to say roll camera, and you're just gonna go mark, and then you're gonna walk away. Now the camera operator does need to respond to you and say speed, and that's another problem is that some film cameras take a little bit of time to get to speed, you know, 35 millimeter especially. They'll kind of go up to speed, kind of settle, and then you can run. So you have to get used to your camera and how that happens because the last thing you want to do is run the camera and say mark too fast, you know. You want to give it a little bit of time. So what we generally do as a rule of thumb is we'll sit down with the first AD and we'll explain to the first AD this process so when the first AD calls out, it makes sense and that the camera guys know that that call out's not for them. I do suggest that you always run with a time code slate. Um, that is time of day with a audio recordist that has a time code slate that the time code's perfectly written. Because one problem is that if there is an issue with the, with the numbers here, um, you can always find the pieces of missing information based on time code. You can also embed time code into video files very easily uh, using DaVinci Resolve if you wanted to. So after you get your scans back from the lab, you could theoretically break those shots down and then add time code to those shots that match audio time code if you were very concerned about that sync ever falling out during a project. It's a technique that I've used a couple times. It does require an export, but generally speaking, you're not going to be working off the DPX files that come off a scanner anyway. So you'll be taking those DPX files and transcoding them to ProRes. So you might as well break it down in that process by take, by take, by take. And then write those individual takes as individual files. Every time the camera starts and stops, you want to write an individual file. And if you can see the time code slate and see the, where the time code slate starts and where the mark happens, you can just write that data in on that particular clip. It is time consuming. It's an AE type job but it's something to think about when you're doing post-production. And we are gonna do post-production videos about this, of course, but I wanted to just explain to you the slate process. So let's go outside right now and see how it's actually done. Go ahead and roll sound. Scene 305 Alpha, take one, roll picture. Picture up, mark, and action. One thing to remember, and I have to beat this into people's head, is that unlike digital, where you can just play it back and make sure you got the shot, with film, you don't necessarily know if you've got what you think you've got. So I think it's more important with film to do multiple takes, you know, at least do a little bit more coverage so that in case something happens with that good take, whether it be something weird with the lab or the camera, at least if something does happen, you know you've got a second take. Picture up, mark it. Mark. And action. A great example of this would be a film I shot in 2020 called End of Life 
where they had one frame that was cut from a critical dialogue scene because the processing machine screwed up. The frames before it are fine. The frames after it are fine. There's one frame missing in the middle of a key dialogue scene. And we did not do two takes because we were running out of time and we had this actor for a very, very short period of time. We had a lot of things to do with the actor. And that one particular moment of dialogue, I knew that I could cut around if I had a problem. And in the end, I did cut around it. But it would have been nice to have had that contiguous dialogue scene, you know? It would have been really nice to have had that and we just couldn't use it. So double takes, slate your film properly, make sure the slates are good. I've actually come back and done tail slates before when I've known that the slate at the beginning wasn't very good. And tail slates are always great to have, but don't rely on tail slates, okay? Unless you know for a fact that you're gonna make sure you remember to slate, don't rely on tail slates. If you have a guy whose just job it is to slate, great. But most times in low budget films, especially the guys that I'm talking to mostly, you're gonna forget. You have to slate, you have to write down the scene and take information and the real information. The real information is very, very important because that's how you're going to identify the real related to the audio file, okay? It's very important that your audio guy is in sync with this real data and the scene and take data, okay? Super important. So yeah, that's that's all we really need to talk about with slates, you know? It's very, very simple process. It's just you have to be very cautious with it because if you're not cautious with it, it's gonna bite you in the butt in post-production and you do not wanna deal with that. The last thing you want to deal with is even MOS shots without slates because you do not know exactly why you did what you did sometimes when you edit months later, you know? Slate, 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 always slate. Don't mess it up. Make sure the slate's in focus. Make sure it's lit properly. You know the deal. Anyway, thanks for watching this video about breaking down the slate on motion picture film. A little bit different than digital. Just wanted to give you a heads up about it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.